okay welcome back dear students to the tutorial about the chemical applications of group theory and this is the seventh video in this series we have been discussing about the application of group theory in spectroscopy in the last two videos we had discussed about the application of group theory in electronic spectroscopy and in this video we are going to discuss about the selection rules in electronic spectroscopy okay please listen <laughs> there are mainly three selection rules in electronic spectroscopy the first one is the orbital selection rule that we had already discussed in the last video actually uh, for a transition to be probable we know that the electronic transition is an electric dipole transition okay that is uh, during electronic transition dipole moment changes so electronic transition is an electric dipole transition so the transition moment integral p is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi i mu psi f d2 okay mu is the dipole moment operator okay and it is equal to that is p is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi i this dipole moment can be resolved into three components in x y z direction so actually the dipole moment operator is is x y z cartesian coordinate itself into psi of d2 so for a transition to be probable from an orbital initial orbital to final orbital the direct product of psi i into psi f should be same as should be same as the symmetry of x y or z okay for a the orbital selection rule is very simple the rule is only this one that is the direct product of the initial orbital and final orbital or initial wave function and final wave function symmetries of initial and final orbital should be same as symmetries of the cartesian coordinate x y or z and that we have we have already proved in the case of formaldehyde that is in the case of formaldehyde hcho pi pi star transition is a allowed transition by according to orbital selection rule but n pi star transition is a forbidden transition in hcho according to orbital selection rule this already we had discussed in the last video you uh, might have remember this or uh, or otherwise you please watch the find last video again okay okay the next selection rule is spin selection rule okay the second selection rule is spin selection rule and this is an important selection rule that is the electronic wave function is actually the product of orbital and spin wave function okay that is psi is equal to psi orbital into psi spin okay so the expression for transition probability p is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi i orbital mu psi f orbital d2 into psi i spin into psi f spin d2 okay it is the pro that is wave function is a or orbital is the we have to consider the spin contribution also okay in the latter case we had considered only the orbital contribution but there is also a spin contribution so the total wave function is actually <coughs> product of the orbital psi o is psi o is orbital wave function orbital wave function okay and psi s is the spin wave function spin wave function spin wave function so the transition probability equation is integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi i o psi i o means orbital wave initial orbital wave function okay and mu mu is the dipole moment operator because electron transition is a 
electric dipole transition, the operator should be elect, uh, dipole moment operator. And psi f o is the uh, final wave function for orbital contribution or orbital wave function, final orbital wave function, wave function of the final orbital or the excited state. D to into integral psi i s. Psi i s is the spin wave function, initial spin wave function. Initial spin wave function. Okay. Into here there is no mu here. In the second integral part there is no mu present in between this because uh, the electric dipole moment operator does not interact with spin. Okay, dipole moment operator has no interaction with spin wave function. So, dipole moment operator is not included in the spin part. Okay, it is only integral psi i s, initial spin wave function into psi f s, final, final spin wave function, d2. Okay, then consider the spin part, orbital part we have already discussed. We, now we are considering only the spin part. That is integral psi i s psi f s d2. Okay. This integral to be non-zero, the direct product of psi i s and psi f should be totally symmetric. Okay. To be, this integral to be not equal to zero, the direct product of initial spin wave function into final wave function should be a totally symmetric wave function like a1 or its equivalent a1g or a1 uh, dash a1 prime etc like that okay and it is possible only if okay we know that direct product of two irreducible representation will be totally symmetric only if the symmetries are same that we have already discussed in the case of direct product while discussing about the direct product. So to get the A1 or totally symmetric representation by the direct product of psi i s and psi f, f s, it is possible only if psi i s and psi f s belongs to the same symmetry. Okay, that means the initial and final wave function must have same spin wave function or same spin, same total spin. That is, S should be same. Okay. That is, electronic transition is allowed only if delta S equal to zero. That is the spin selection rule. Okay. That is, the spin is actually uh, 2S plus 1. S is the uh, spin, uh, spin quantum number of the electron. 2S plus 1 is the total spin. Okay. And the total spin should be same. Okay. Because only that case, the psi i s and psi f s should have the total symmetric. The direct product of psi i s and psi f s should be total symmetric. Therefore, initial and final wave function or initial orbital and final orbital, initial state and final state should have the same spin. That is, electronic transition is allowed only if delta s equal to delta s equal to. So, Spin selection rule can be stated like this. Transition between states of different spin, spin multiplicity are forbidden. Transition between states of different spin multiplicity are forbidden. Only those transition having orbitals of same spin multiplicity are allowed. Okay, that is singlet to singlet doublet to doublet, triplet to triplet transitions are allowed. Okay, singlet to singlet, triplet to triplet, doublet to doublet, this type of transition having same spin in the initial and final state are allowed, but the transition like singlet to triplet, doublet to quartet, like there is, there is a change in spin multiplicity are forbidden, they are forbidden. And that is the spin selection rule. Okay. I think we have this you, may, you might have studied while discussing about spectroscopy in your UG classes. The spin selection rule in electronic spectroscopy is that only transition with no change in spin are allowed. During, during electronic transition, the spin of the state should not change. That is the selection rule for spin multiplicity. Okay.
<laughs> okay we can illustrate this rule take ground uh, hchos example we have already discussed in the last video okay the ground electronic configuration is sigma 2 pi 2 s2 px2 that is non bonding orbital sigma star 0 pi star 0 that is anti bonding orbitals are unoccupied the bonding and non bonding orbitals are occupied and their symmetries are in the in the terms of symmetry we can write a12 b22 because sigma is a1 symmetry pi is b2 symmetry b22 and the s orbital is a1 symmetry a12 px orbital is b1 symmetry b12 sigma star is a1 symmetry a10 pi star is b2 symmetry b20 orbital symmetries are represented in small letters and the total symmetry of this representation ground state is a1 symmetry because all are paired okay when all the orbitals are paired the total symmetry will always be a1 because uh, by direct product of any two symmetries are always a1 so a1 raised to 2 is equal to a1 b2 raised to 2 is always also equal to a1 b1 raised to 2 also equal to a1 so if all the orbitals are paired then if all the orbitals are paired then the overall symmetry will be always a1 symmetry because a1 raised to 2 is a1 b2 raised to 2, 2 is also a1 a1 raised to 2 is a1 b1 raised to 2 is also a1 okay because we, that, that is a conclusion that is if an orbital is doubly occupied or paired then all if all the orbitals are doubly occupied then the symmetry will be total symmetry will be always a1 okay now consider pi to pi star transition okay that is transition from transition from a pi orbital to pi star orbital that is pi orbital is this one b2 to pi star pi star is this one b2 so okay uh, then <coughs> the excited state configuration will be a1 raised to 2 b2 raised to 1 here one electron is shifted to this orbital b2 raised to 1 and here also the 0 become 1 b2 raised to 1 a1 raised to 2 b2 raised to 2 a1 raised to 0 so a1 raised to 2 is a1 b2 raised to 1 is b2 into b2 raised to 1 is equal to b2 a1 raised to 2 is a1 okay i will show you again i will show you again that is a1 raised to 2 is a1 b2 raised to 1 b2 raised to 1 that is b2 raised to 1 is b2 b2 raised to 1 is b2 b2 into b2 a1 raised to 2 is a1 b2 raised to 2 is a1 okay and b2 into b2 also equal to a1 because direct product of two same representations are always a1 so a1 into a1 into a1 into a1 that is equal to a1 that is it also has a1 symmetry so initial state is a1 final state is also a1 so the transition is allowed according to orbital selection rule because the integral psi i x y or z psi of d to it is a1 it is a1 and by looking the character table of c to b hcho is c to b point group by looking the character table of c to b point group the z coordinate transforms as a1 the z coordinate transforms as a1 so a1 into a1 into a1 and that is equal to a1 so the it is totally symmetric so so the transition is probable according to orbital selection rule but <coughs> here in the case of uh, ground state all the electrons are occupied sorry pay all the uh, orbitals are paired so the symmetry is s equal to 0 therefore 2s plus 1 is equal to 1 so it has multiplicity of 1 so this state actually can be written as this actually a1 so it is it can be written as a1 1 1 a1 that is it is it has a uh, total spin of 1 or it is a singlet state so the excited state also should have also should have singlet state according to spin selection rule spin selection rule states that only those transition 
with no change in spin is allowed. Here ground state all the electrons are paired. So S equal to 0. 2S plus 1 is equal to 2 into 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. It is a single state. A1 raised to 1. The final state is A1. It also should have A1 raised to 1 according to spin selection rule. But here there are two unpaired electrons. Okay. So the transition should be probable is allowed only if the electron in the one of the B2 state is in upward spin and another state is downward spin. Actually, this transition is uh, spin forbidden, spin forbidden, but if it is allowed if transition takes place like this. That is transition in one of the excited to higher level with the spin changes, spin inverted. So spin of this B2 state is this uh, par uh, uh, upward, the other B2 is downward. So become half plus minus half is equal to 0. Then in this case also it is 7 raised to 1. Then the transition will be allowed. Okay. For example, uh, uh, read here. But all the electrons are paired in ground state. So S equal to 0, singlet. It may be represented as 7 raised to 1. I told you. So the excited state also should be singlet according to spin selection rule. Spin selection rule states that there should not be change in spin during transition. So excited, the ground state is singlet. So excited should also be singlet. But there are two unpaired electrons. We know, indeed, because it is B2 raised to 1, B2 raised to 1. There are two unpaired electrons. So the spin of these two electrons in this excited state must be opposite. That is, one of the B2 should be like this, and the other B2 should be in the opposite direction. Okay? In that way, this, the excitation will be allowed. Okay? That is about the spin selection rule. Okay? Um, the, the other selection rule we will discuss in the next video. Okay? Uh, watch this video very well and read the textbook. Okay? Thank you.